makes no difference what you're going through. You're gonna make it. I'm gonna see you through. Put your head, put a smile on your face. This is another test.
Come on and put those glad hands together. We bless the Lord on today. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I don't know about you, but that's my decoration that the Lord, the God has a blessing with my name on it. If that's your decoration, would you join us in the chat box on Facebook and just declare that God's got a blessing with your name on it. You just tuned in to the Mount Nebo virtual worship experience. And we're excited today because we know God is going to do a great thing through our pastor on today and he's excited to have him have joining him on the zoom experience the security ministry of the Mount Nebo church and so this morning we're going to be led into worship by the coordinator of our security ministry elder Mark Young come on and put those hands together as he comes and lift up the name of the Lord amen amen I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, come magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. For he is worthy of all the praise and all the honor. Come on, let's give God some praise in this house. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we will bless your name at all times, and your praise shall continually be in our mouths. Hallelujah. He's worthy, church. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Hallelujah. And let us exalt his name together. Church, we ask that you would share and like uh, this Facebook page. Uh, we ask that you would enjoy the service that we're about to have. And just, just enjoy yourself in the Lord because he is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. At this time, we will have, in this order, our scripture by Sister Anita King. We're going to have our prayer by Deacon Howard Bradley. And then we'll have a selection by our Sister Natasha Sally. Amen. And that order. Amen. If you can unmute Sister Anita. Good morning, Mount Nebo. God bless everyone. Today I'm coming from Psalms 24 in the New King James Version. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world, and they who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul into vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them who seek him, who seek your face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be you lift up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, Lift up your heads, O you gates, even lift them up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we come before you one more time, Lord based on the blessings that you have given us by waking us up this morning, starting us on our way, giving us a chance again, Lord, to be with you, Father God, to be in your presence, Lord, and we thank you. We thank you that we could come together in corporate worship, Lord. We thank you for providing for us, for sustaining us, Lord, this past week, Lord. Despite what went on in this nation, Lord, we know that you're still in charge, and we just want to thank you. We want to thank you based on the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us on the cross on Calvary, Lord. You're a wonderful and awesome God. Besides you, there's no other. And we just ask you that you continue to be with us, to walk with us, to talk with us, Lord, to lead us in the road of righteousness. Lord, you're a great and awesome God, Lord. And we just thank you for everything you do for us, Lord. Father God, you're so wonderful. There's not even words enough to explain how great you are. Thank you for being the great I am. Thank you for being El Shaddai. 
Thank you for being Jehovah and Yahweh, Lord. Thank you for providing for us, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord. We ask that you touch those who are in need, Lord. We touch those in need of financial blessings. We touch those in need of physical blessings. We ask you that you touch those who are bereaving today, Lord. Father God, you're the only one that can release us, Lord. You're the only one that released the captives, Lord, uh, from prison, Lord, and the captives from in our mind, Lord, being captivated by sin, Lord. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for our pastor, Lord, the under shepherd, uh, Reverend Dr. Johnny M. Green, Lord, for continue to lead him and guide him, Lord, that he may fill the church, Lord, with what you tell him, Lord. We thank you for all the leaders of the church, the members of the church, those who are on uh, the security team and those who are on Facebook, Lord. We just thank you so much because you're just that great and good of a God. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Oh, I'm here. Y'all better 
Say it like you mean it. Say it like you mean it. Say it like you mean it. With your stripes. It's a cross, God. Oh, he died that we might be healed. Oh, he suffered that we might be healed. From the inside. This time we have our Reverend Baker do the announcements. Thank you. Thank you, um, Elder, Elder Young. My, 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 my. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Sally, for that, that song. Um, anybody believe the words of that song? If you wouldn't mind, would you give the devil the black eye by just putting in the chat by I'm still here? Can you give him a black eye and just say, I'm still here? I may have some scars. I, I had some disappointments, hallelujah. But I, I'm in 2021. God has been good. That's my testimony. I wanna give him a black eye today. He tried to take us out in 2020, but I'm still here. And I bless the wonderful name of the Lord. And I'm here with my scars. Anybody know you got some scars to say, I've been through some battles. But look at here, God has kept me. Come on, come on, declare. Put your praise in the chat box. Put your praise in the chat box. If you do, is there anybody with a hallelujah on this second Sunday of this new year? God is good to us. And because God is good, I, don't, I can't hold back for praise today. I can't hold back for praise because God has blessed me in so many ways. And one of those ways is that I live, move, and have my being because of the great God we serve. And because I live, move, and have my being, I want to give God praise. And I want to thank him for being a part of the Mount Nebo Church. Anybody glad to be a part of the Mount Nebo Church? And because I'm a part of the Mount Nebo Church, we are excited about the great things that are happening in this part of the vineyard. And we want to remind you, um, first of all, let, let me remind all new members, all new members, um, there's a meet and greet with pastor right after worship. All of our new members, God has been good to Mount Nebo. And um, Pastor like to meet with all of our new members who have joined us virtually. Um, so immediately following this service, um, you will join Pastor on Zoom. Uh, we thank God for you. And then we also want to be reminded that on tomorrow, on tomorrow at 7 p.m., Pastor is looking and expecting the members of Mount Nebo to join him at 7 p.m. You will be receiving um, our Zoom link from our church administrator, Sister Sally, um, tomorrow at 7 p.m. He's looking for us as we um, focus on our church budget. And then immediately following the church budget meeting, all leaders will remain on the line where we will get further direction for leadership for 2021. We also wanna remind you that on this Wednesday, at this Wednesday, we have began to partner uh, with the great work that our pastor is doing in and through impact and the Columbia University, along with one of our own members, um, Dr. Nia Mincer, and they have started a three-part um, brain health series. We attended the first part in December, but on this Wednesday, on this Wednesday, the second part of that series will take place and our own Dr. Nia Mincer will be the facilitator along with our pastor. So we're asking if you have not registered, uh, Dr. Nia, could you put that in the comment box, in the chat box on Facebook? She's gonna put the link on, in the chat box. So all you have to do is hit that link and register. And it was a blessing 
that first session, we invite more Mount Nebo. Share it with your family, share it with your friends. Join um, Pastor and Dr. Nia Mensur, our own, as they facilitate the second part of the Brain Health Series. We invite you to participate that Wednesday, this Wednesday, beginning at 11 a.m. Then we're also looking forward to seeing you back. Our family and friends will be on Zoom. We begin our Bible enrichment. We started a series on how to thrive in 2021. And we've been looking at um, Psalms 1. Psalms 1 is so rich and we've been unpacking it because we believe God has more for us. So we ask that you would join us on this Wednesday at 6.45. Zoom will open at 6.30. Also, we ask that you would mark your calendars. Mark your calendar for next Thursday on January the 20th, 2021. Our uh, ministers, the ministers of the Mount Nebo Church will be offering a round table discussion on it's time for faith. It's time for faith. And we need to join them as we look at how does, um, how should we operate in faith during this critical time? What does faith look like in crisis? What does faith look like in hard times? Our ministers will be discussing that with us. So we invite you to come and be a part of that. We are blessed people at the Mount Nebo Church and we encourage you to continue to do those things that the Lord has laid on our pastor for the vision of this house. Thank you so much, Elder Young. Amen. Let's, let's bless the Lord for the announcements and uh, the work of Reverend Baker. Um, before I uh, move forward, I want to say to uh, Letitia, uh, so I'm sorry I mispronounced your name and I ask that you would uh, charge it to my head and not to my heart. Amen. Amen. I, I have the uh, honor of introducing our pastor, the uh, angel of Mount Nebo. Um, this great man of God will. Will bring, if he can bring a word, he is someone special. And I'm honored to be under his leadership. Uh, he's been a blessing to me and my family. Um, and we're, we're just so happy to be a part of the Mount Nebo Baptist Church. So after my voice, you were here, that none other than that distinguished pastor of the Mount Nebo Baptist Church, that is Dr. Johnny Melvin Green. Amen. Amen. Good morning and God bless you. What a blessed privilege it is to uh, be here on the second Sunday morning uh, in the first month of the year. I'm delighted and I'm excited uh, to serve as senior pastor of this awesome uh, church, this great congregation. And before I go any further, I want to uh, offer my condolence to uh, the Ham family, we uh, eulogized uh, Sister Ruth Ham on yesterday. Beautiful homegoing service. We want to thank Brother Isaiah Owens for his professionalism and uh, how he uh, conducted the uh, funeral uh, preparation for our own Sister Ham. And then we want our own Sister Minnie Blackman. Uh, to know that uh, she's in our prayers this morning, Sister Minnie Blackman. We want you to know that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. Pastor and congregation, we're praying for you in the loss of your beloved brother. And I pray that God will continue to give you comfort over the last several years. You've been through a lot, uh, but God has brought you to it and God has brought you through it. And remember all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord, to those who are the called according to his purpose. And we know that you love God. It's evidence in your walk with Christ. So Sister Minnie Blackman, God bless you. We're praying for you. We're also uh, asking you to keep Sister Nita King and her family uh, as they continue to mourn the loss of their loved one. And Sister Annette Williams, we're praying for Sister Annette. You all know how near and dear Annette is to my heart. And uh, we're praying for her in the loss of her nephew. 
I want you to keep uh, Sister Narcissus Ramsey and Sister Sarah Lemon and many of our senior men, uh, members uh, lifted up in prayer. The prayers of the righteous uh, availeth much. The prayers of the righteous availeth much. And I believe, I believe, my Nebo, that God continues to hear the prayers of the righteous. So let us continue to lift up our senior saints. Uh, Sister Ray Ann Bessie Lou, you're in our prayers. Uh, and let us lift up um, uh, Sister Cheryl Graham. Uh, today, yesterday, I believe, was Reverend Graham's birthday. And that womb is still open and it's coming up on a year uh, in March. And so we want to continue. Uh, all of our members who lost loved ones to COVID-19, uh, we want you to know that we have not forgotten about you. We have not forgotten about your church will never, your church and pastor will never forget about you in your hour of loss. And so certainly we want you to know we are continuing uh, to pray for you. It is time for us to receive uh, our tithe and offerings. Um, many of you, uh, all, most of you give electronically uh, via uh, Givelify. I know that's my mode of giving, uh, Givelify.com and look up Mount Nebo Baptist Church. Or you can go to Zale at uh, M-T-N-E-B-O-H and sell your offering, your tithe and offering, or you can mail your tithes to the church, directly to the church, 1883 Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard, New York, New York, 10026, or you can drop your tithe and offering off by the church uh, weekdays, Tuesday through Friday, 10 to 2 and 5 to 8. I hope, I hope that you will continue to support the ministry. Listen, we were, we were able to uh, put over a quarter of a million dollars uh, on our uh, liquidation of our loan in 2020. I want to, I want to celebrate uh, the trustee ministry, the leadership of Sister Helen Simmons and uh, Natasha uh, Danzler. I want to thank them uh, for the lead, the entire trustee ministry. I want to thank them. Uh, because as they are stewards over the finances of the church, they were able to manage in such a way that we were able to pay right at a quarter of a million dollars on our restoration uh, loan liquidation. I'm so excited. Listen, I love it when the people of God come together. I love it when the people of God work together and we have so much we have to do. We have so much we have to do. Listen, even though we are not in the church right now, there are some major, major restoration projects going on uh, in the church. Uh, uh, Brother Geddes has just been a, a not only a, a, a great sexton, but he has been a superstar uh, as it relates to major repairs that he has made around the church and 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 just so much maintenance work is going on. You won't believe all of the maintenance work that's going on. And the trustees brought to my attention, uh, several years ago, we made uh, repairs on the wall uh, on either, either side in the balcony, but we learned uh, recently uh, that uh, the deterioration came not from the roof, but from the side of the wall. The bricks needs to be grouted. Uh, so we're gonna have to call a masonry company in and we're gonna have to re-grout uh, the external structure uh, of the church so that water will no longer continue to get in. Uh, that's going to be a major project this year. And then we are going to have to replace our boiler. Uh, listen, uh, uh, I want to thank South Carolina Oil Company on the leadership now of Tasha Danzler. Um, I want to thank them because they have they have done miracles with our baller. They have they have worked miracles with the baller, but it's only so many uh, repairs that you can make. Uh, but we know that with God's help, with supernatural intervention, and with your support financially, 
we're going to make all of these necessary repairs. And when we go back in that church, I had planned to be back in the church preaching, uh, but uh, they asked me to put, put the brakes on. Uh, they asked me to slow it down. Um, I'm just, man, I'm revving. My motor is revving. I'm ready to get back. I was in the pulpit preaching yesterday. And uh, even though it was a, a eulogy, listen, I felt like preaching. I felt like preaching. And so I'm revving to get back behind that sacred desk. It won't be long. Uh, but there are just a few more repairs that need to be paid, made. So when we come to you and we ask you to support the ministry with your tithe and offering, we're not just asking you uh, just to support the, the maintenance of the ministry, the pastor and, and staff, but it is the upkeep of our church. So I'm going to ask you to continue uh, to give that special $20 on the first Sunday for I burn it down. Uh, but I'm going to ask you to make a commitment to paying your tithe in 2021. I'm going to challenge you to be a better steward and a more faithful and dedicated member when it comes down to giving to the work of the kingdom of God. So at this time, it's time for us to pay our tithe and to give our offering and give uh, sacrificially. Questions raised, will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me, but you say, wherein have we robbed thee? And tithing and offers your curse with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all of the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. Prove me now, herewith saith the Lord of hosts, and I will open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there won't be room enough to receive it. And everybody on the line today on Zoom and on Facebook Live, you can testify that God is a God who opens heaven's windows and pours out blessings. I'm so blessed I don't have room enough to receive all the blessings that God has showered down upon me. And listen, you can't be God giving no matter how hard you try, because the more you give to him, the more he will give back to you. Good measures pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosom. I love the Lord, and I know you love the Lord, and I'm going to, I'm going to be faithful. Uh, I'm going over and above this year. Uh, I want to top all of my giving over the years. This year, I want this year to be the best year that uh, as it relates to my giving, I want to break records. I want to listen because I'm committed to the Lord. What shall I render unto the Lord uh, for all of his benefits? Look at how God has blessed me. Why would I be selfish with the God who blesses me? In the, I wouldn't have nothing if it wasn't from God. You wouldn't have anything uh, if it wasn't uh, from God. There are people who are in food lines, they're at food banks daily, just trying to survive and you have an income, you have a roof over your head, you have food to eat, somebody ought to be praising God. And so I'm going to open up my treasures and I'm going to first of all pay my tithe because I'm committed to paying my tithe, but then I'm going to give an offering and then I'm going to give sacrifice. This year is my year. I'm going to give more to God. I'm going to make a commitment. I'm gonna give up more of the personal things that I like to spend money on to give more to God this year. God bless you. God keep you is my prayer. Let us pray over the offering. Father, we thank you for the gifts. We thank you for the givers. Uh, we pray now that your people will uh, be committed to greater stewardship this year in 2021. And Lord, it is my prayer that we will uh, pay off our uh, loan, uh, that we will have all of the repairs made. And I know that by your grace and by your mercy and with your hand of blessing, we can do it in Jesus' name, I pray. Bless the gifts and the givers is your servant's prayer in Jesus' name. And all of the people of God said, amen. Uh, I think we have a selection coming up. And then uh, after that, I will be coming back with the message. Say amen. Cause he, he sees what 
Yolanda Adams uh, from Houston, Texas. Uh, I believe that song is Step Aside. Uh, that, that really ministered to me, that ministered to me. And I hope and pray that that song uh, ministered to you. I think we owe a big shout out and a virtual hand clap, clap of praise to our acting minister of music, uh, Natisha V. Sally on her song selection. Uh, man, that is just awesome. Uh, I didn't know God had called her to the Ministry of Music until we were uh, paused by this pandemic. But thank you, Sister Sally. I want to thank my armor bear extraordinaire and our worship leader today, uh, uh, Elder Mark Anthony Young, who has just done a uh, superb job uh, at being our worship leader today and all of our program participants, Anita and Deacon Howard, our chairman of Deacon. I'm still brimming over uh, with joy from that Sunday school lesson. Oh, my God, if you miss Sunday school, man, I'm telling you Sunday school is becoming the new thing. It's, listen, that's the place to be on Sunday morning at eight o'clock Sunday school, man. I'm, 
I'm fired up. I'm fired. I need somebody to say with me, I'm fired up. Wherever you are, in your home, in your automobile, in your office, uh, whatever you're doing, I want you to just pause and say, I'm fired up. I'm fi that Sunday school lesson uh, got me so uh, revved up today. I, I don't know what to do. And I want to admonish you. I want to exhort and encourage you uh, to get in Sunday school. If you're not in Sunday school, you are cheating yourself. You are cheating yourself. You can learn so much in Sunday school. I'm telling you, you can learn so much from the Bible in Sunday school. I want, every, I want all of the young preachers to know, all the ministers and trainers to know that I got my basic foundation uh, uh, understanding of the Bible in Sunday school. And I thank God, I remember my very first Sunday school uh, in the primary class with my late aunt, uh, Virtus Harper. She was my first Sunday school teacher. And uh, even today, I remember the first verse she taught me to commit to memory. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding, but in all of thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. My aunt made me say that every Sunday morning in Sunday school, and I still have that as one of my favorite Bible verses. So thank you uh, to our Sunday school ministry, Christian education department. Man, I just wish I could give a, a gigantic hug to, to, to the entire uh, membership today. Uh, especially our leaders. I, man, I can't thank them enough for, for the able leadership uh, that they are given. I'm, I'm proud. I'm proud. I'm proud to serve as the pastor of Mount Nebo. And I'm proud to work with people who not only love the Lord, but they have ability to get things done. And we have an amazing church. And if you're not a member and you're tuning in via Facebook Live, our church is growing. That's that's what's really exciting me. That's what I'm really excited about, uh, Elder Young. I'm excited about the phenomenal church growth we're having, even in a pandemic, and to see so many new people uh, coming to the ministry and people coming back to the ministry. I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the work of God, and I can't wait until the Lord put a pause on this pandemic and uh, uh, our, our, our moment of re-entry, Nita, our moment of re-entry. I'm looking forward to the moment of re-entry. I'm looking for that day when those doors of the physical building will swing open. And, and I'm telling you, it's going to be like, like the waters cascading over Niagara Falls. There, there is going to be so many people rushing to get back. Now, you know what, you don't know uh, how good you have something uh, situation until you until you don't have it no more, and and now we know you know there was a time when people could have been in church and they wasn't in church, but now they want to be in church and can't be in church. You watch when those doors uh, swing open. There's going to be a flood, a, a tidal wave. The floodgates are going to open. And I'm, I'm going to be head of the line. I'm going to be head of the line. I may be out. I may be like some of the people uh, camped out at. I may do a tailgate. I may do a tailgate outside the back of the church. I may pull my truck up there and let that tailgate, put my portable grill on the ground and tailgate all night long, me and Deacon Howard. And we're not going to drink no beer and none of that hard stuff, but we're going to have a big picture of Kool-Aid. And I can see all of my armor bearers and deacons and we're going to be out there tailgating the night before we go back in. And uh, then I'm going to let them keep watch the gate at night. And I'm going to go upstairs and go to sleep and wake up and be ready for church the next morning. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you is my prayer. Let's pray now. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It is in the strong, precious, powerful and potent name of Jesus, who is the Christ, I pray, and all the people of God said, amen. My sisters and brothers, this morning, I'm going to call your attention to the gospel of Matthew chapter 28. And normally when I, I read this passage, I read verses 18 and following, but I want to bag up. I want to bag up this morning and I want to look at, um, 
I want to look at verses 16, Matthew 28, and I want to begin in verse 16. Um, and then I want to read down to uh, the last verse 16 through 20. That's Matthew uh, chapter 28, uh, verse 16 uh, through 20. And I'm going to be reading from the King James Version. Y'all know the New Living Translation is my favorite version, but this morning, I just love how Matthew talks in the King James Version. Verse 16 says, then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world, amen. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. I wanna preach this morning about sharing our faith with others, sharing our faith uh, with others. And I wanna begin this morning by saying that when we read um, the words of Matthew, as he records the remarks of Jesus uh, to his disciples, the first thing that we should underscore is the fact that it is here in what we reference as the great commission that Jesus is literally Deacon Bradley Howard giving the marching orders to the church. Now, we know that there has not been the utilization of the word church, uh, ecclesia, uh, at this point in the New Testament. We don't, we don't find the discovery of that word church, ecclesia, until, um, uh, as Jesus used it in Matthew 16, but we don't literally find a reference to the church uh, until we come to uh, the book of Acts. But this is literally the marching orders given by the master who is the founder of the church. And let me just parenthetically park right here and say to you that the church, as we know it, the body of Christ, uh, belongs to Christ himself. Christ is the, the founder of the church. He he built the church. You 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 heard him say in uh, chapter sixteen uh, when Peter confessed that he was the Christ, the Son of the Living God. Jesus responded by saying, "Peter, flesh and blood uh, did not reveal that unto you, but my Father which is in heaven revealed it upon you." But while you are speaking, while you are uh, connected to heaven's hotline, and while there is this. Uh, divine spiritual humane interchange, I want you to know that I am going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Now, these are words that Jesus uttered to, uh, to the disciples and to Peter uh, prior to the crucifixion, prior to his uh, death, burial, and his resurrection in, in Matthew 16. But when we come to Matthew chapter 28, uh, uh, Dale, when we come to chapter 28, uh, this is what we call a post-resurrection meeting. This is a post-resurrection meeting. Now in chapter 16, when Jesus uh, calls, uh, is in the coast of Caesarea Philippi, uh, this is prior to his death his burial and his resurrection. But in Matthew 28, this is post-resurrection conversation. Uh, this, is, this is the Lord holding court, uh, Helen Simmons 
uh, with his disciples. This, this is the Lord uh, uh, after he has gone uh, to the cross, after he has submitted his hands to the nails, his side to the Roman soldier's spear, his head to the crown of thorns, his feet to the spike, after he had allowed them to spit on him, to rail him, to walk around the cross, to slap him upside his head and call him everything but a child of God, after they even tempted him by saying, you saved others, but yourself, you cannot say. After he uttered seven words uh, from the cross and said, tell Testi, it is finished, and bowed his head uh, and committed himself back into the hands of the father, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, they came, they took his body down. You know the story. And they laid him in a borrowed tomb. They laid him in a brand new tomb of which no individual had ever lain and they put him in that tomb they sealed that tomb and then they stationed deacon howard soldiers outside the tomb to guard the tomb but you remember what jesus said jesus said i'll rise again jesus said three days later, tear down this temple and three days later i'm going to build it up again you remember jesus said no man takes my life but i lay it down but I'm coming back to pick it up again. On the third day morning, just like Jesus said, listen, this is why I love his word. But you can trust, and this is not even a part of the manuscript. This is not even part of the original writing of this message, uh, uh, Nita. Uh, you can trust the words of Jesus. I'm, I'm standing on his word. I don't know about you. In, in 2021, and I'm, I'm bringing off course intentionally this morning, but in 2021, I'm going to take God at his word. I, I'm, going, I'm going to trust Jesus. It's so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word. I believe his word. I believe his word above anything any man or woman can say, I'm standing on the word of God. Jesus, Jesus told his disciples prior to his crucifixion, prior to the execution, prior to the uh, carrying out of the most heinous crime in human history, the execution of heaven's darling and earth saved. They put him in that bar tomb. And while he was there, the old preacher said it. I'm not making this up, the old preacher. I'm just quoting the late C.B.T. Smith and the late Dr. C.A.W. Clark and all of the great ones, W. William Daniel. I'm just quoting them. Uh, uh, Jesus went down and, and, and did battle with death, hell, and the grave and took the sting out of death and the victory away from the grave. And early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. When the women came to the tomb, they found the stone rolled away and they thought they were having a uh, dialogue with the God and found out that it was Jesus the Savior. And he said, you go tell Peter and the rest of my disciples uh, to meet me in Galilee. Well, here is the meeting. They are in the meeting. This is the meeting that Jesus convened. He convened the meeting. He called the meeting. Jesus, Jesus called the meeting. And let me just parenthetically say, when Jesus calls a meeting, you ought to attend the meeting. You ought to, if, if whatever meeting Jesus called, you ought to want to be at the meeting. Don't don't miss the meeting. That don't don't and see. Here's here's the real deal, Mark Anthony Young. Here here's the real deal. Uh, there were people who were not at the meeting the first meeting that Jesus convened after the resurrection. Let me tell you who was not at the meeting. Thomas was not at the meeting. Uh, uh, I remember I remember a sermon, my late pastor, Dr. Clarence Booker Talifario Smith III, the man that missed the meeting. So you don't want to miss the meeting. You don't, you don't want to miss the meeting because at the meeting, Jesus is going to be there. And wherever Jesus is, I want somebody to hear me uh, in Facebook land this morning. Wherever Jesus is, I want to be there. Uh, wherever Jesus is, Reverend Sandra Baker, that's the place to be. Letitia B. Sally, wherever Jesus is, that's the place where I, I want to be where Jesus is. Because wherever Jesus is, uh, God is there. Uh, I and the Father are one. So I want to be at the meeting. And so here they are in the 
first post-resurrection meeting that Jesus convened. They are back in Galilee. I wish I had somebody. And 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 when they they see Jesus, get this now. Don't miss this. I I, I don't I don't want you to miss this, Minister Althea, Minister Pam. I don't want you to get this. Uh, the first thing, the first thing, Reverend Baker, don't miss this. The first thing that they do at the meeting is not read the minutes from the last meeting. <laughs> I, oh, I wish you would employ your spiritual imagination. That's not the first thing that they don't they don't they don't have a reading of the minutes. They don't. They don't poll the house to see who's there at, at this particular. Now, we're going to convene tomorrow night, and we're going to make sure that everybody who's in the meeting belong in the meeting. But they didn't, they didn't read the minutes of the last meeting. They didn't uh, poll the house to see who was supposed to be there and who was not. Uh, they didn't even vote on an agenda, a meeting agenda. I want you to follow the flow of the passage. And, and it was no need to do that because Jesus was heading the meeting. Jesus was heading, he is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings. He is the head of the church. He is the chief cornerstone. He doesn't hit, whatever he says is the meeting agenda. And whatever the Lord says, we don't have to have a motion from the floor. Come on, somebody. Whatever the Lord says, we don't have to move uh, to get it first and second. We don't have to know what the pleasure is of the church. When, when Jesus speaks, we ought to do what he says do. And so Jesus convenes the meeting. They are in Galilee. And uh, the first thing that happens is uh, they worship. They worship, worship, worship. You know, the worship, the word worship uh, comes from a Hebrew word, worship. And the word uh, worship uh, means to ascribe to God something of value. Uh, when, we, when we worship God, uh, we give ourselves to God. Worship is, uh, real worship comes, uh, uh, Elder Young, uh, Elder Moody, when we give ourselves to God. That's what God wants from us. God wants us. He wants us. Now, now you think God wants your money. God doesn't want your money because the silver and gold is mine, said the Lord. You think God wants your creature comforts. God doesn't need your creature comfort because the cattle on a thousand hills belongs to him. He doesn't need, he doesn't need anything you have in your house. Uh, the Bible says the earth is the Lord's, the fullness there of the world and they who dwell therein. Well, what does God want from me? I'm glad y'all are asking some good questions this morning. God wants my worship. God created you and I to worship him. That's what he, that's what he wants uh, from us, Deacon Michael Brown. Uh, he, he wants us, he wants us, uh, uh, Sister, Sister Sally, uh, Betty Sally down in South Carolina and uh, 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 Rashida. He wants us to worship him, Nia. God, God wants us to fall prostrate uh, before him. God wants us to. So here's what happened when they when they got together at the meeting that Jesus convened Reverend Sandra Baker, they worship him. I can imagine with my my sanctified imagination. I heard Denise Evans say with my mind's eye this morning. Thank you, Denise. I'm going to use that with my mind's eye. I can I can employ my spiritual imagination. And I can see that when Jesus came to the meeting in Galilee, they had the hands up in the air. Somebody must have said, praise the Lord. Somebody must have said, hallelujah. Somebody must have said, thank you, Jesus. That's what worship is about. Worship is ascribing something of value to God. Now, we worship God for who he is. We worship God. Who is he? I'm glad y'all are asking some good questions. He's God. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah Tiskinu. He's uh, uh, Deacon Howard. I heard you uh, today when you referred to him in Sunday uh, earlier today. You referred to him as 
Jehovah El Shaddai. Yes, that, that's, that's who he is. We worship him for who he is. He is a great God. He's a great God, and a great God deserves a great worship. I, I, I know our worship in the sanctuary has been put on pause. I know we have been exiled to a virtual worshiping community, but because God is real, and I know he's real, because God is good all of the time, and all of the time God is good, we ought to do like the disciples did uh, after the resurrection, we ought to worship him. But now, listen, everybody in the church, watch this. I want you to get this. I don't have I don't have but four or five verses I'm using today. I want you to watch this. Understand unequivocally, brothers and sisters, that everybody is not on the same spiritual level. <laughs> oh, oh, somebody missed that. I said everybody in the church is not on the same spiritual level. There are some people in the church who are, are in a deeper and a more committed relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, and, and listen, that's not to say you're a bad person. That's, that's, not, that's not to say uh, that you're not going to heaven. That's not to say that you are coming up short, uh, but uh, spiritual maturation and maturity is a process. Preach Johnny Green, I'm doing the best I can. I hope y'all are giving me some virtual hand claps out there uh, uh, in the uh, uh, Facebook community and on Zoom. Listen, listen, spiritual maturation is a process. You don't, you don't become deep in your faith overnight. First of all, there has to be a desire in your heart. Paul said, oh, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering to be made conformable unto his death, if by any means I may obtain unto the resurrection. There has to be a desire to be in a deep fellowship and a deep relationship with God. Spiritual maturation and maturity takes time. It, it is a process. And so not everybody in the meeting was on the same plane spiritually. Notice the text said, some worship, they worshiped him, but some doubted. I'm, I'm, listen, I'm glad, I'm glad that, that Matthew, I'm glad, Reverend Bay. Can I preach it all this morning? I'm feeling, I'm feeling my, I'm, I'm feeling my spiritual strength this morning. I'm glad that Matthew included this second part in verse 16. I'm glad that Matthew said that while some worship, others doubt it. What what does it mean? What 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 does it mean? A uh, 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 minister. Uh, Clark, what does it mean when it says, Minister Michael Evans, that some doubted Deacon Lamont do? What, what it means right there is that some had their questions about the validity of the resurrection of Jesus. Because be clear on one thing, it, the word was out over town that the tomb was empty. The word was out over town that the tomb was empty. And there were, there were men who were literally paid a stipend to lie about what really happened, to change the narrative. We know that Jesus got up on the third day by the power of God. But the soldiers were paid to say that while they slept, uh, his disciples came and stole the body away. And so you can imagine what the Jerusalem press read like on that Sunday morning. You can imagine that the headlines were the grave cave door is open and the tomb is empty. Where is Jesus? That there, there must have been an APB put out on Jesus. And you know that the disciples had to hear, they had to hear all of the various reports and narratives that were being perpetuated. So some doubt it. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? The Lord can handle your doubts. The Lord, and, and don't you sit up here this morning in worship and act like you've never had your doubt. All of us have had questions 
uh, for the Lord. All of us at some point in our spiritual pilgrimage and sojourn, we have had our questions for the Lord. I want you to be crystal clear. I've had many questions. I've had to ask the Lord, but can I reiterate and reinforce the idea that the Lord can handle your questions? The Lord can handle your doubts, but you know what you have to learn how to do? You have to learn to worship in spite of your questions. You have to learn to worship in spite of your doubts. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You've got to learn to worship. You have to learn to work through your doubt. And, and once you learn to worship and work through your doubts, then you are ready to share your faith. Notice what happens next. Notice what happens next. After, after Matthew tells us uh, that... Um, uh, they worshiped him. And after Matthew tells us uh, that some doubted, it says Jesus took center stage. Jesus, Jesus took the floor. And somebody shout, I'm glad that Jesus took the floor. Uh, after they had worshiped him, after, even amid their doubts, Jesus came and spake unto them, just like Elder Young. I'm sure somebody said, we'll now hear from Jesus. And when Jesus took the floor, it says, he said, all power, all power, exousia is the word given unto me in heaven and in earth. There are two words for power in the Greek New Testament, the word exousia and the word deutimus. Now the word deutimus is seen in Acts uh, chapter one, verse eight. But here in Matthew 28 and verse 6, 18, it is the word exousia. It is the word for authority. Jesus is saying, I'm resurrected now and I'm in charge. It's all about me now. And here's what he said. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And then what we see first is our Lord's command. He gives a command. When we think about sharing our faith, uh, brothers and sisters, it is not optional. Uh, as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we don't, uh, sharing our faith and telling others about Jesus is not optional. It's obligatory. It is something that we have to do. It is something that we shall do. It is something that we must do. Why do we engage in Sidewalk Saturday? Why do we get engaged in Fantastic Sunday? Why are we trying to have a visible presence externally on the streets of Harlem because Jesus commanded it. Pastor, why must we walk down the streets and pray for people? Why must we help those in need? Why must we tell others about Jesus? Because it is a command. And in verse 18, the first thing that we see in verse 19 is the command, the command, the Lord's command. And as we look at the command, we should see the generality of the command. Look at the first word. He says, go, 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 go. Uh, I have a dog named Roxy. And, and sometimes Roxy uh, likes to cling to me. Uh, she's a loving dog. She's a, she's a dog that, that loves to hang under me. Uh, but there are times when I need to take care of business when I can't pet her and I have to give her a command and I say go and she knows that go means I need you to move out when the Lord says go he's saying to the disciples move out it is time can I say to you today church can I say to you Mount Nebo uh, uh while we are uh on pause because of the pandemic it is not reason for us to stop doing ministry, Elder Moody. The Lord uh, is general in his command. He says, go. He, that means get out. That means don't sit around. That, that means this is not time for us uh, to be 
sitting around and, and having fellowship with one another. No, the general command, the generality of the command is to go. But not only do we see the generality of the command, we see the specifics of the command. Go ye. He said go, but when he says ye, he's talking about all of us. See, some people think, Elder Young, Elder Moody, some people think the command of Jesus is for the preacher. And I hear people saying, they don't pay me to preach. Let the preacher tell the story. Let, let the preacher do all of the teaching. Let the preacher do all of the witnessing. No, the command is not only general, the command is specific. Jesus said, go ye. That means you, you, and you. That means the preacher. That means the deacon. That means the trustee. That means the usher. That means the nurse. That means the choir member. That means the you. That means the mother of the church. That means the sexton of the church. Help me somebody. That means the youth director of the church means everybody, everybody should go. Everybody should go. He says, so we see the generality of the command. We see the specifics of the command, but not only do we see our Lord's command, we see our Lord's commission. Listen, he says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Listen, I see three things in the commission. I see, first of all, it is a commission to teach. It is a commission to teach. You just can't go and get people and, and not proselytize them. You can't just go get people and not spiritually catechize them. You can't just go get people and not prep and train them. People need to be taught. That's why we, we plead with you to show up on Wednesday night for Bible enrichment. That's why we encourage you at eight o'clock on Sunday morning to be in Sunday school. When, when we teach people, people grow, people expand. And you know, you can tell when, you, when you've got a disciple that's growing, uh, they don't worry the pastor as much as they do when they are immature. See, immature Christians worry the pastor about everything, but spiritual and mature Christians, they learn and they grow in the word and they learn how to handle matters on their own. And they don't call the pastor when they catch a headache. They don't call the pastor when they stomp their toe. They don't call the pastor uh, when they catch a common cold. Help me somebody. We've got, we've been commissioned to teach. And one of the main commission, one of the main things the Lord wants the church to do is to be a teaching church. But then the church has the responsibility to baptize. And that word uh, baptize comes from the Greek word baptizo, tizo, which means to immerse. We have to we have to baptize the converted. Uh, we, as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, not only must we be teaching, but we must be baptizing by immersion because it is a representation of our identification with Jesus Christ. When we are baptized with Christ, we are identified with Christ. We are identifying ourselves with his death. We are identifying ourselves with his burial and we are identifying ourselves with his resurrection. So the Lord's commission is a commission to teach. The Lord's commission is to baptize. But I see something else in this same verse. Not only is it a commission to teach, not only is it a commission to baptize, but it is a commission to commit. The Lord wants your commitment, Reverend Baker. The Lord, Elder Young, wants your commitment. Nita King, the Lord wants your commitment. Deacon Bradley Howard, Elder Moody, Minister Pam, uh, Sharon Lemon, God wants your commitment. Janique Green, God, Nia Mensa, God wants your commitment. Where did you, where did you get that from, Pastor? I see the commission to teach. I see the commission to baptize, but where is the commission to commit? It's right here when the Lord says in verse 20, 
teaching them to observe, to observe. Another way of looking at it, teaching them to commit to all things. In other words, Jesus is saying, you better recognize I'm looking for something out of you. I'm looking for you to commit to going. I'm looking for you to commit to teach. I'm looking for you to commit to baptizing. But I'm also looking for you to make a commitment what am I calling you to commit to? He said, to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Let me break it down. You better learn to do what Jesus tells you to do. Just do, just do it. Just listen, listen. Uh, Nike, Nike, Nike has a, Nike has a wonderful thing. Just do it. Well, I want you to know that Nike stole the theme from Matthew 28 and 20. I want you to know that, that I want you to know Nike got the theme right out of 28 and 20. Uh, because what, when Jesus says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever, I have commanded you verbally and what you have seen me do by my life's example, I want you to make a commitment. What did we see Jesus do? I'm glad you all are asking good questions. We saw Jesus teaching the masses. We saw him preaching the kingdom of God. We saw him baptizing at the Jordan River. We saw him make a commitment to his father in the garden of Gethsemane when Jesus wanted to throw in the towel, when Jesus wanted to avoid going to the cross, he said, Lord, if it be possible, remove this cup. But here it is. Here's the commitment. Nevertheless, nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. The Lord commissions us to teach. The Lord commissions us to baptize, the Lord commissions us to commit. But this is why I love Jesus. This is why I love Jesus. I'm getting ready to give you the shout right now. I'm getting ready to give you what you need to lift your hands high. I'm giving you what you need to jump up out of your chair in the kitchen, at the dining room table, in your bedroom, sitting on the edge of your bed, listening to me to preach me preach the word of God. I talk to you about our Lord's command. I talk to you about the generality of the command and the specifics of the command. I talk to you about our Lord's commission. It is commissioned to teach. It is a commission to baptize and it is a commission to commit. Can I tell you something? When the Lord asks us to make a commitment, he gives the commitment first. God never asked us to do something he's not willing to do. In the commission, he asked us to commit. But in his final word, the Lord says, Reverend Sandra Baker, I want you to know I am committed to you. I want you to know I am with you. Listen, I'm glad when I'm with my friends. I'm glad when I'm with my loved ones. I feel, I feel comfortable when I'm riding in the car with Elder Young and he has uh, that piece of steel on his side or when I'm in the office with Elder Young and, and, and Deacon Bradley and Anita and, and, and you know, they are uh, packing that steel. Oh, I feel a sense of security. You know, I'd be like, you know, I hope nobody don't come up in here and show out and act a fool. And, and get some lead put in them. I, I'm just trying to keep it real. I, I, I feel that commitment. I feel that commitment. I feel, I feel that commitment. But I want to tell you something. Uh, not only do I acknowledge their commitment, more importantly, uh, I, like, I, I like what Kenny, Kenny Jones said, that more importantly, that's my word for the day, more importantly, the Lord makes a commitment to, he asked for us to commit, but in asking us to commit, he makes the commitment first. Look at what he says. He says, when you go, when you go teach, when you go and when you go baptize and when you make a commitment, he says, I want you to know that I'm committed to you. Here it is right here. He says, when you go, understand that attached to the go is the word low. You, you can't have the low without the go. 
you, you, you cannot have the low without the go. Get that now. You cannot have the low without the go. First, he says go. That's how he starts off. But in the end, he says low. He says, I am with you always. Two things I want you to see about the Lord's commitment, and I'm done. I want you to know first that the Lord's commitment is personal. It's personal. Somebody shout, it's personal. He says, he says, he says, Lo, I will be with you. Somebody shout, God is with me. Well, let me tell you how Big Mama Green will say it, or how Big Mama Dead said, I ain't torture, I ain't lonely, uh, or a Vatula, or one of my sage aunts would say it. They would say it like this. He walks with me. He talks with me and he tells me that I am his own. Is he walking with you today? Is he talking with you today? Is he reminding you that you are his own? Even when we go through, Nita, even in losing your loved one, guess what? God has been with you. Here, listen. He'll walk to the hospital with you. <laughs> He'll walk to the funeral home with you. He'll go into the funeral home office and make arrangements with you. He'll get in the family car with you. He'll ride down to the church. When you walk in the sanctuary, he is walking with you. He says, my commitment to you is personal. Can I tell you something? And I'm closing Elder Moody. I never would have made it without the Lord. I've been through a lot. I've seen the lightning flash. I've heard the thunder roll. I've felt the sin breakers dash and trying to conquer my soul. But can I tell you something? I've also felt the presence of the Lord. He says in his commitment to us, it is personal. But I got one last thing to tell you. When we, when we follow the Lord's command and when we note the generality of the command and the specifics of the command. And when we obey his commission to teach, to baptize and commit, the Lord makes the commitment to us. It is personal, personal. But can I tell you one last thing, Natasha uh, Dazzler? Can I say one thing, Helen Simmons, before we leave today? Can, and I go meet with the new members who joined the church. Can I say that not only is the Lord's commitment personal, but Bradley Howard, the Lord's commitment is permanent. The Lord's commitment. Did y'all see it? Y'all missed it. Y'all didn't even see it in the verse. It's personal, but it's permanent. Listen at what the Lord says one more time. He says, I am with you always. I am with you. That's the personal part. But he says, I am with you always, permanently, even until the end of the world. In other words, here's what Jesus said. He says, I'm going to be with you until the Lord signals to Gabriel to pull out his trumpet. I'm going to be with you until Gabriel takes one foot and put it upon the sea and takes the other one and ride upon the Before I'm going to be with you until Gabriel blows his trumpet and the trump of God is going to sound, and the dead in Christ. He said, I'm going all the way with you. And that means, watch this, because we have not reached the end of the world, that means that even if I die before Jesus comes, wherever I am, Jesus is with me. Guess what? When you go down in that grave, guess what? Jesus, they said, is going down in the grave with you. And on that great getting up day, on that great getting up day, listen, the Lord is going to be with us. And when the trump of God sounds, the dead in Christ is going to rise. Those who remain uh, shall uh, be caught up. The dead in Christ is going to rise first. And those who remain shall be caught up. Listen, I'm so excited because Jesus is with me now. And Jesus promises to be with me throughout eternity. And because of who he is, because of what he has done for me, died on the cross for my sin, and because he's with me now, I want somebody who does not know the Lord in the departing of your sins, I want you to get to know him today. How do I get you to know who Jesus is? I'm going to share my faith with you. I want you to know that the same God who saved me, he is the same God 
who will save you. Will you put those glad hands together, those virtual hand claps of praise? Will you praise God all over the virtual worshiping community? Will you shout, thank you, Lord? Will you shout, thank you, Jesus? Every Christian, every member of Mount Nebo Baptist Church in the village of Harlem should now be ready to share your faith with others on the job, in your family, in the neighborhood, in your building, wherever you go, tell somebody about Jesus Christ. God bless you. I love you, my Nebo. You're in the hands of Reverend Sandra Baker. My God from Zion, what a word. Could you put those hands together again? What a word we received on today. Thank you, brother pastor. My God, I feel like going on today. Thank you, thank you. After such a word, this is the time that we set aside in our worship experience to throw out the lifeline. This is the opportunity we give so that some man, some woman, some boy, some girl will make a decision. This is the, the it's decision time. It's decision time. And, and Mount Nebo, if you got family members in your home, if, if you got your neighbor that you had watching, this is decision time. After hearing such a word, we're, we're asking that you would make a decision. Will you choose Jesus today? Will you choose the Lord Jesus Christ? Our pastor has given us such a powerful word. You're right, brother pastor. You fired up. Oh yeah, you fired up today. And you bless my, my life and my ministry because you reminded me that the Lord is committed to me. He's committed to me. And so today he's committed to you. If you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior, you need to know that he loves you. You need to know today that no matter what your past record is, he's giving you a clean record. If you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior, today is the best day of your life. If you acknowledge that you are a sinner, if you acknowledge that you need Jesus in your life, he will accept you. He will accept you. So come on over. Come on over on the Lord's side. Somebody put that in the chat box. Come on, on the, over on the Lord's side. Will you be on the Lord's side? Will you join God's army today? Would you choose to be on the Lord's side? And if you choose to be on the Lord's side, that means that you will accept the Lord Jesus Christ into your life. And we're a witness. I believe there's some witnesses on Facebook and on Zoom that will declare he'll be a real good friend for you. He'll, he'll be a heart regulator. He'll be your healer. He'll be, he'll be whatever you need him to be. You just have to make a decision. And if you choose to make a decision today and you want to join a church that believes in studying God's word, we invite you to uh, follow the link that's in the description box on the Facebook. It'll take you to our website. And on our website, you'll see a form to be filled out how to belong to the Mount Nebo experience. And if you choose, you can just put it in the chat box on Facebook. We have members who are watching, members who are praying for you even now that you would come on the Lord's side. And we assure you, if you make that decision, you will learn that is nothing better than having Jesus in your life. Is there any witnesses that can put in the chat box that the best decision that you've ever made was when you chose to follow Jesus? And if you do that, We'll embrace you. Pastor would love to be your pastor. The members of Mount Nebo would love to have you a part of this church family because here at the Mount Nebo Church, we believe it's a real good place to worship. It's a real good place to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray that you will become a part of this great ministry known as the Mount Nebo Church. God bless you is our prayer. Thank you so much, Brother Pastor. What a word, what a word. Thank you, Reverend Baker. Uh, we do encourage those of you uh, who are in Facebook land, those of you who uh, have decided to worship with us uh, for whatever reason, uh, we do encourage you to uh, uh, 
find that link uh, in the uh, chat box on Facebook Live, and uh, we encourage you to uh, uh, join us at Mount Nebo. I'm excited. I'm excited about sharing my faith. I hope that you're excited about sharing your faith uh, with God's people today. Wherever you are, make sure uh, you make that commitment to share your faith and follow the commission of the Lord to teach, to baptize, and to commit. And remember, the Lord is with you, not only now, but permanently throughout eternity. God bless you and God keep you is my prayer. If nothing else claims our attention, uh, I want to go ahead and give our benediction. Don't forget uh, a power up prayer call on Tuesday morning at 6.30 and uh, Tuesday evenings at 7.30. And don't forget our Bible enrichment on Wednesdays at 6.30. Don't forget our Kingdom Kids today at noon. And uh, don't forget the church uh, business meeting tomorrow night to discuss our budget and to share with you where we are uh, in regards to our financial stewardship. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you is my prayer. Now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us all henceforth now and forevermore. Let us all say amen. God bless you and have a great day, uh, Mount Nebo.